Oh, so it's it's been a bit hectic. I'm making moving preparations and Yeah, as are we. My my brain is a frantic tornado. I am free. You're moving a lot farther than I am. I'm moving like half an hour drive just to a different part of Jersey and to a house. Yeah, I'm moving uh, 15 You're moving miles. much farther. Yes. So I have this tornado of everything that must be done in my head at all times. Yeah. Just so many things. So many. That's kind of how Dan is. Like, Dan's a planner. So he already has, like, half the house boxed up. And every couple days, he's like, you, sh you should probably start going through your clothes. Packing some stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it. No, you should really, you should really do that. We're moving in like a month. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Day of, you're just going to throw all your shit in a few boxes and be like, go, 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 get out of the house, go. That's like legit what I did when I moved into my sister's house. <laughs> Not when I moved out. When I moved out, I was better. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to drive him a little nuts, I think. So Because he's like a bullet point list planner. And I'm like, eh. So this week, our final story this week. Only your butts in the shopping. No. I could, this is one of those, oftentimes we get stories where people send me that I go, bullshit. This cannot <laughs> yeah. possibly be true. And I research them. I track down all the information I can about the story to verify at least that the event occurred and is being reported consistently. I can never say if something's being reported accurately, but if it's being reported consistently and multiple news sites have done research on this, I feel comfortable proceeding with it. You do quite a bit of due diligence. I did my best on this week. And sad to say, I believe this story is true. The last story we do this week. And God, like the giant chicken. Apparently, the giant chicken is true. That's not a hoax. It's the not thing the is giant terrifying. chicken. The giant chicken is not nearly as scary as the last story we have this week. Wow. But of course, that's not the only story that we have this week. We have many. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And we're starting in California this week. You're bothering me. Somebody wrote us an, a, a cool theme song. I heard, I saw that. Oh. Somebody wrote, Do You Want to Do the Nonsense? And it's really good. Yes, I will have to put it on later. Yes. We'll have to. Get that i saw that i retweeted that that's how you, i put it out there i did too and it was really good so we we have quite often we have stories of naked people or people in general climbing the fuck down chimneys and i don't know why well this week we have it's not a chimney so they are kind of learning. I feel like that should be a good thing, but won't turn out to be. It does not. It it does not. It's 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 like a chimney, except it isn't a chimney. And it's naked. So there's that. Naked men stuck naked man stuck in vent thought it was wishing well. Those aren't things that look the same. No, they aren't. And you know where wishing wells normally aren't? On top of buildings? No, no, normally they're not. Fire crews had to rescue a naked man after he got trapped inside a vent shaft above a sandwich shop Tuesday morning. He said he mistook it for something magical. Robert Turbidy, 48... 48 made his way onto the roof of a Togo sandwich shop in Napa, California early Tuesday morning. He lowered himself into a crawl space using a makeshift rope that broke. Apparently he was under the influence when he got on the roof. 
He later really? told, he later told authorities he thought the shaft was a quote wishing well. How far into the vent shaft does one have to get before they start to realize it's not a magical wishing well? I'm thinking not far. Well, he made it all the way to the bottom and got stuck. I mean, if your wish was to meet firemen. Yeah, meet firemen and very angry store owners because look what they had to do to the wall. Yeah. To get his ass out of there. Like how much pot did you smoke? That like, you were like, you know what, man, I could go for like a sub. And then you go to get a sub and you're like, holy shit, man. There's like a magical wishing well up there. I'm wondering, is, is there any sort of insurance that covers that? I don't know. Is there a naked- I mean, I guess you could count that under customer damage. Is is there uh, is there a naked drunk man climbed down my air shaft that we had to knock a hole in the wall to get it out insurance? You know, at this point, there should be drunken naked person insurance. There really should be at this point. If our show is any indication of the norm, that's a thing you need. Possibly if, as much as you need flood insurance. If Progressive starts bundling naked drunk people insurance i would be tempted I man would be i can't so wait to see the farmers commercial on that we are farmers bump, bump, bump. oh god <laughs> jesus put on some pants just think you know how they do the little fun trophies like take a <laughs> shaft and we covered it <laughs> naked uh. sam naked footlong shaft and we covered it we are farmers bump, 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 bump. I always sing along with that slogan. Dan laughs at me. He, it's as catchy. Well, as well he should. Um, I just, for fuck's sake, why would you do this? Wishing wells traditionally not on the roofs of public no, businesses. No, they're not. I mean, th this is the worst Goonies remake ever. I don't know what that means. Not, you never... Where is Dan? We've been over this. Where is Dan? No, I've never seen the Goonies. Where is Dan? He knew that when he married me. Where is Dan? I think he might have fallen asleep. Nope, I just heard him laugh. Dan, if you love this woman, show her the Goonies. D Dan Nash, like word. Uh, what am I supposed to show you? You're the Goonies. The Goonies, apparently. Why? She's never seen the Goonies. He's making faces like that, he doesn't think it's important. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, you're going to need to get on camera. If you want to like that. <laughs> this, is an Amer th this is an American cultural touchstone. Just your nipples. There you go. That she missed out on. I saw gremlins. Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's no? Spielberg. Ooh. Oh. So was Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> That's a very good point. We're not going to make our children sit through that <laughs> shit, are we? <laughs> not all winners. We have more naked, of course. We always have more <laughs> naked. We have more naked. Why do we have more naked? Ugh. Throw this in the category of Jesus Christ, the old drugs still work. Naked man arrested after police find him yelling gibberish on Indiana Highway. Oh. Columbus, Indiana. Columbus man was arrested Friday after police found him walking naked and yelling gibberish on US 31. Officers were sent to Dale Court around 4.18 p.m. to investigate a report of a person entering a garage. On the way there, police learned the man, later identified as 26-year-old Sterling A. Wessel, had taken off, <laughs> taken off all of his clothes and headed toward a Kroger marketplace. Police say an officer attempted to stop Wessel, 
when he was walking in front of Kroger and Wessel resisted, so the officer took him to the ground. Wessel, who was believed to be under the influence of an unknown substance, staying in the hospital for medical clearance, he was then taken to jail, charged with residential entry, public nudity, disorderly conduct, and resisting law enforcement. How many times a week do you think the average cop has to tackle a naked person? <laughs> Because, like, they say most cops go their whole career without firing their weapon. But, as we... But I feel like most cops, at least if we're any kind of representative sample, which we're probably not, it seems like most cops have to tackle at least one crazy person. One naked crazy person, I should say. Not... I'm not joking about the mentally ill. I'm saying... It seems like at least once in their career, a cop has to get really up close and personal at somebody's junk. You know when these calls come in, they're all sitting around the station house. We got one! One, two, three, rookie. not it. Where's the rookie? This, you will see this in station Like, house. I feel like they understand that they're signing up to potentially be put in danger and shot. I feel like they don't know they're signing up for naked uh, people. Yeah, I don't think that, is, is there a, na anyone who's ever been in police, is there anyone here who's ever been in police academy? Is there a naked like person naked day? Training? Yeah, do they do like naked people training? Is, is there a naked person obstacle course? Because I feel like there should be. Is it they like... You grease know? up a cadet. <laughs> See, I was going to say, is it like art class where you get someone to volunteer to come in and be a nude model? Is there like someone who volunteers to go and be naked and run around the police? Listen, academy? I told you, I used to be the practice dummy for my friend's EMT class. Well, that's good, but that's a far cry from running around naked at the police academy. But I volunteered to let people perform their public service on me as practice. Well. I didn't get paid. I did it because he was my friend and, you know, they needed the practice. So I let them splint my leg a couple times on Saturdays, you know. I just, I'm wondering, is hey, that, who teaches the naked person course at the police academy? I don't know, but I feel like. This would make a great comeback for the Police Academy movie franchise. <laughs> they never had a great anything to begin with, Tara. No, but I love those movies when I was a kid. And they you've so seen Police Academy, but you haven't seen the movie. I've seen all the Police Academies. And I'm really surprised at it when I look back now because they were so inappropriate for someone my age. You are destroying the audience right now. You know that? Well, that's that's my goal. That's what I do. Oh, you're not going to make... Oh, no. What happened? God, he just Gandalfed off the other tower. <laughs> she tried to jump to, like, the second to top level, and we have a folded up blanket there, because it's kind of a hard surface, so we have a blanket there to make, and she, she sunk her clothes into the blanket, and the blanket just went... <laughs> no, Gandalfed. Why are you laughing? No, she stormed off in a huff, I guess. Gandalf, that is perfect. That is beautiful. Every cat Gandalf, at least. <laughs> oh, speaking of other shit, police were probably not trained to handle. And then there's this asshole. This is from uh, Canada. Calgary Stampede Balloonatic. Sorry for stunt. That's that's a lot of words. That do not appear to go together. A man who strapped more than a hundred helium balloons to a lawn chair and soared above the Calgary Stampede grounds apologized Friday for the danger he caused, but said he doesn't regret his actions. Wasn't this a fake Darwin Award urban legend back in the 90s? Well, it's it was fake then. It's goddamn real now. I have the greatest story to tell for the rest of my life, says Daniel Voria, 27, when asked outside his sentencing hearing if it was worth it. I understand the risks. If you do anything, you're going to get in trouble. If you don't do anything, you won't be in trouble, but you won't get anywhere. Um, no, that is not how... Voria pled guilty in December to dangerous operation of an aircraft floating into Calgary airspace as part of a publicity stunt for his cleaning company, Earned him the nickname Balloonatic. Boria tied industrial-sized balloons to his lawn chair as part of the plan to parachute 
over the stampede chuck wagon, but high winds forced him to jump early before he reached the track. Did he get high enough to go into like, when they say airspace, they don't mean any space that is in the air. No. When they say airspace, they mean where airplanes go. It is unknown. But I feel like if he'd gotten that high, he wouldn't be able to breathe or certainly jump. It is unknown what height he achieved. There's an estimate of some 14,000 feet. Wow. Some point, a commercial aircraft, the offender called it a 747, passed underneath him. How, okay, I have questions. <laughs> like, how was he breathing? Probably brought oxygen with him. How did he jump? He probably just got out of the chair. <laughs> yeah, but you don't survive a fall from 14,000 feet. I don't care if he you're had, fucking Wolverine. He had a parachute. Did he? Yes, that was his idea. He was he was going to parachute. Oh. Yeah. Oh, parachute over. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Seven forty seven passed underneath him. Which means he could have potentially brought down a fucking airplane. Yes. With a bunch of balloons and his goddamn lawn chair. Because, like, if you live anywhere in the vicinity of an airport, you have to inform them if you're having an event where you're releasing balloons. Mm -hmm. For a while, it was trendy to release balloons at your wedding. You have to be really careful about that shit. You can't just do it without informing because you will bring down a fucking airplane. The fucking jet engines, they, they suck everything in, not just air. He's lucky he didn't get sucked into the fucking jet engine. Yes. This, this was a bad plan, you imbecile. I mean, if you want to do something like this, I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't live your dreams, but you should take the proper precautions. I love it. He says, if you do anything, you're going to get in trouble. If you don't do anything, you won't be in trouble, but you won't get anywhere. That's really not true. No, you can do things. You could do many still things. not be a moron. Yeah, there's a reason people aren't doing stuff like this. Yeah. It's not because they'll get in trouble. It's because, holy shit, this is an idiotic thing to do. Like, you could pull a stunt like this if you coordinated with somebody. You could. They do hot air balloon races. Like, you you could coordinate this into a big plan, but that would take planning and probably money. Yeah. You can do anything if you do it the right way. Don't cheap out because... You'll goddamn get sucked into a jet engine. And, and die. You will get sucked into a jet engine and die. Speaking of cheaping out, oh, this, why, this, this, keep, uh, uh, add this to the list of shit that keeps happening. Why does this keep happening? I fucking, why? Is this Florida? I believe this is Florida. Yeah, this is Flo KTLA. Is that Florida? Is that California? 99 Luff Balloons is not a LARP. <laughs> no, but it is based on a true story. Oh, this just a much more terrible one. This asshole. Hemet man arrested after allegedly trying to pull over sheriff's deputy using fake police lights. Siren. R really? 21-year-old Hemet man was arrested on suspicion of impersonating a police officer. He tried to pull over a sheriff's deputy on Tuesday. Johnny Issa, Issa? Johnny Issa Sellers was arrested Tuesday night by the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. About I don't know. Are we sure it's not Issa? Are we sure that's not like a funny yokel name? That Johnny is a Sellers. No. He's a Sellers, all right. No. A sheriff's deputy whose gender was not given was driving a personally owned vehicle in the Murrieta area when a white Dodge Dart pulled up behind the sheriff's department said in a news release. The Dart had emergency lights and a siren activated, including two flashing lights in the upper windshield area. An audible police style siren was also used by the Dart. The deputy did not pull over and instead contacted the Riverside County Sheriff's Dispatch Center. 
The dart passed the deputy's car and drove on. The deputy took a photo of the car and its license plate. After an investigation, the car was found in Hemet with uh, LED light strips in the upper windshield area and a public address system installed. Now, police are known to drive unmarked cars. Mm -hmm. It always cracks me up Long Island. The Suffolk County cops got Camaros maybe 10 years back mm. as their new unmarked cars. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to help them because the unmarked car is usually a Crown Vic. So everyone's like, oh, it's Crown Vic's cop. So they got Camaros because those would blend in better. But then they put fucking stadium lights on top of the Camaros. I'm talking fucking four rows of blinking, flashing lights. Kind of ruins... You're not incognito anymore. However, I have never seen a cop drive a Dodge Dart. A Dodge that, Dart. <laughs> that is that is not. I, I wanna, for for our foreign audiences, I've got to show them the picture of a Dodge Dart. Yeah. So they have an have an idea. So of... you really understand what we're talking about here. Where is it? Come on! Oh, there we go. This is the Dodge Dart. It's not a car that inspires fear or even passing respect. It is a fuel efficient compact car. Yeah, it's a and little I'm not car. judging it. Like I drive a little roller skate of a car. I only have to fill my gas tank like every two weeks and it costs 20 bucks and that's great. But I'm not scaring the shit out of anybody <laughs> in that car. Yeah. I'm not commanding respect in that car. Yeah. I'm just just not. You're not really going to pull this one off. No. You're not selling the illusion, especially when there's a cop who's like, "Yeah, what are the fucking odds of that?" That you pull for an actual off-duty cop. Get the fuck out of here. Like that's just bad luck. Of course, if I was a cop, I'd be just for a few seconds, I would blink and be like, "Did somebody get a shit detail? Look at that fucking car." <coughs> Who lost so we a could, bet? Just kind of play along for a bit. Maybe. See how much of it they managed to get right. I would definitely like put my badge on the steering wheel, make sure my radio was turned on, and yeah, just be precinct? like, "What precinct you out of?" Hi. Hi. You know, you know, Jimmy. There's no Jimmy. That precinct burned down in 1987. Why Why would you do this in the first fucking... Well, we kind of know why you're doing this in the first fucking place. You're, you're trying to be... You're trying to do awful things to people, is what you're trying to do. But you're not even competent about it, man. No. We had to... Back when I worked at Spencer Gifts, we used to sell those fake cop lights. <clears throat> and we had to stop. Because people were using them to do awful things to people. You know how bad it, it's not good to be caught impersonating a police officer. That's that's no, not one of those. They don't like that. It's not like you know when you dress up like a cop as a stripper and whatnot. That's okay. You're fine doing that. But when you pretend to be a real cop, that's not okay. Nobody's they, happy, and they get a little upset. They do. They don't like it. Well, they pretend to be cops on TV. That's a different thing. That's a different yeah. thing. That's that's called acting. That's a job. Oh, I are I cannot believe. Normally, this next story would probably be all one of our last stories. It would probably this would be qualify as one of the last stories. It's not though, but it's a close contender. But wait, there's more. Oh God. Um. We are not sponsored by the Dodge Dart, everybody. I just want to make that absolutely clear. Um, but I'm sure it's a fine automobile. Let's talk about Cochrane, shall we? There's, okay. a, there's a segue, everyone. Let's. Let's do. Cock rings must be sized properly. They've got to be sized. You can get stretchy ones, though. You do. But if you're talking a metal cock ring, you've got oh, to size yeah. that properly. I've, I've borrowed them to use as a hair elastic in a pinch. <laughs> they work. I'm take care. <laughs> but yeah, if you're talking metal, you gotta you, you want that to fit. 
Yeah, because there's no give, and if you've done it wrong, you're going to have an interesting weekend. Sparks fly as penis ring cut off with angle grinder. Oh, no. Sparks flew at the emergency department at the Major University Hospital in Dublin. As fire brigade personnel were called in to use an electric... This is in Ireland? This is in Ireland. Called in to use an electric angle grinder to remove a metal ring from a man's penis. Unit of the Dublin Fire Brigade was called after medics tried unsuccessfully to remove the man the ring from the man's sore and swollen genitalia. Medics had failed to remove the ring with an ortho with orthopedic instruments, including a saw and a bolt and bone cutters, oh. which failed to grasp or even indent the ring due to its durability and size. This is the one cock ring. <laughs> Was this shit forged in the fires of Mount Doom? Where did you get this thing? The man uh, had the man presented with what the medics in the March edition of the Irish Medical Journal described as a rare case of, this is the best phrase I have ever heard, quote, penis strangulation. Oh. Which, oh, no. Penis strangulation. Which requires urgent intervention to avoid potential organ-threatening complications and to resolve blood flow issues. The man and to had have it not just fall off. You tourniquet something for long enough, it dies and falls off. The man had sex seven hours prior to seven hours prior to presenting at the A and E before sex had applied a titanium penoscrotal constriction device. Titanium. That is a fantastic phrase there. Titanium penoscrotal construction device. I think we have our title. <laughs> Penis you know how in the, in the dick pill commercials, they say if you have an erection lasting more than four hours, four, quattro, four, seven, siete. That's, that's too many. As the man was sedated, the fire brigade personnel cut the device in two with the handheld angle grinder. They had to jaws of life his dick. <laughs> the medics continued to run water over the penis and scrotum throughout the procedure to prevent overheating or thermal damage to the skin. Oh my God. The procedure to remove the ring took 20 minutes and the paper reports that protective fire protection sheets had had were used to prevent the to protect the patient and staff from sparks. Oh, and that's all because you couldn't properly size your cock ring before use. I, I, I feel like you should not use something like titanium. <laughs> Titanium is made to last. Right. Like, maybe you don't need the adamantium concrete. <laughs> maybe you could just get one made out of a regular what? metal that can be removed, if need be. But it's kind of the same reason, like, I get the concept of glass dildos, because they're supposed to conduct heat. But man, the wrong day. <laughs> like, glass can splinter. It can break. And that's not somewhere you want anything like that happening to you. Like, just, just be more careful with your nooks and crannies, you guys. Penis strangulation. That is a you only get term. one set. They have a lot of nerve endings. You, you need to treat them with care. You need to keep them clean. You need to be careful where you put them. And you need to be careful what you put around them or in them. Titanium penoscrotal constriction device. Say that seven times. It's like fast. super califragilistic expialidocious, except horrible. With an angle grinder. Yeah. Uh, now, normally this would be our last. We, we would end on. <laughs> Terry, this you're making that. my penis very nervous. I hear that a lot. <clears throat> if I had a nickel for every time a man said that to me, I I'd never have to work again. Normally, this that would be one of our last stories, but this is our last story. But wait, there's more. 
You know how often I used to I tell one element of our audience or another to clench. I'm like, gentlemen, like you clench. should have just now. Sorry, guys. Women clench. Well, guess what? This week it's open to everybody. Oh boy. This is this is for this is fun for the whole family. Clench tightly. Prepare thyself. Now I want to point out. This is a Daily Mail story, so it was suspect to me to begin with. Then I did the background. I looked into it. I looked at the original Chinese newspaper that reported on the story. Two different sources. This happened. So I did my due diligence to the best of my limited ability as a schmuck on the Internet. I'm going to grab a comfort hippo. Drunk man stuck two live fish in his anus. Oh. Is forced to undergo surgery after one of them swam into his abdomen. Oh. Wouldn't, wouldn't all the acid and stuff you have in there kill it? A drunk man was rushed in the hospital after he put two live fish into his anus. On purpose? The pond loach, the two pond loaches swam up into his that's, intestines. That's by accident, Tara. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How do you accidentally put two fish up the butt? <laughs> but I can't imagine why you would do it on purpose. <laughs> Look, there is a fish in Brazil that will swim up your dick and it's barbed and you can't get it out. Nature is scary. The two pond loaches swam into his intestines, one of which even broke through the bowel wall. Oh, God. severe abdominal pain to the agent, to, to which the Which means you're going to die of sepsis, by the way. They had to get in there and, and do something about it. Yes. Yeah. Because the literal shit that is in your intestine will kill you yeah, if it's... not constrained to your intestine until expelled. So it didn't get into the acid, Tara. It got into the intestine. According yeah, to reports, think, you'd think that would kill it too. According to reports, the 45 year old man claims to have been drinking on March 10th and put the fish inside the body. The anal loaches, a loving tribute band to the rectal eels. <laughs> Deep cut from a longtime watcher. As two loaches had stayed in the patient's body for over 24 hours. Surgeons did oh my God, ab abdominal. Look at that yes, let's let's not, let's 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 see if people see what's going on here. That's the fish in his body. That's what was put in his butt. 45 year old man. So no, this was not a frat prank as somebody asked. Doctor successfully removed the loaches, uh, one measuring six inches long. Why would, why? Okay, remember how I was just saying, be careful with those part, I mean, technically your ass isn't, whatever. <laughs> it could be, maybe it is, if you're into that, that's fine. Mm. Don't ever put anything inside of your body without an exit strategy for it. Whatever goes in, needs to come out well the fish had an exit strategy yes but he didn't <laughs> don't put the beads up your ass if they're not strung together so you can pull them out mm -hmm. don't put the cucumber in if it could break in half like don't put things in your body that you don't have a very specific plan for removing them because otherwise you're really not going to be happy with the results We'll just say that. I love how his, his excuse for this is, I was drunk. I have never been that drunk. I have never been that. I have never been sitting around with a half-empty bottle of vodka and going, hey, hey, yeah. I'm put a fish in my butt. And I've been pretty fucking drunk. I have been pretty fucking drunk, too. But I have never been two aquatic creatures up my ass drunk. <laughs> I've never been one aquatic creature up my ass drunk, let alone two. Oh, yeah. Did you think the first one got lonely? <laughs> hey, 
I don't know where your friend went. Go find him. Go find him and bring him back. Bring him out. I, I didn't bring think him about back. This. He's been in there too long. Go find him and bring him back. What was your plan? <laughs> If you're going to put it in, have a plan to get it back out. <laughs> oh Surgery my. is expensive and dangerous. <laughs> Stop putting fish in your butt. God damn. I had here's, to... Well, here's kind of the logistical part I don't understand. Mm. Like, you know the expression pushing rope. Yes. Like, that fish looks floppy. Yes. Which, I'm not even sure how you managed to get it up. That must have taken an enormous, like, you're you're holding something that's slippery and floppy and alive and trying to sh force it into a clenched tiny space. Well, it probably wasn't clenching. I'm pretty sure he was okay with the whole, and yet still, it is not. Still. It is unless, not. Unless you literally leak shit everywhere you go, it's not a big open hole, okay? Well, it might be now. It might be now, <laughs> but it wasn't then. Because otherwise you'd, like, you know, you'd be a mess. I, you know what I had to search? So I'm, what are the logistics of this? Floppy, wet, slimy things don't just go into tiny constricted spaces really easily. I had to I have ex-boyfriends. I know this for a fact. Oh... I had to search Google for the terms drunk man. I saw that and I was curious. Fish. And I was so excited about tonight. Anus. I was thinking, but I was thinking that some drunk man did something with the anus of a fish. No. Like I was thinking they had a drunken fish anus eating contest no. or something. I was not expecting this at all. I had to, I had to look this up. This is in my Google search history now. Forever. Someone at Google who was sitting around who has nothing better to do but to watch this shit saw my drunk. Well, that's a new one. No, no, no. You know the videos you always play if Google was a person? Yeah. Like imagine walking into that poor dude's office. And saying drunk man fish anus. Just picture his face when you say those words to him. If Google was a person. So the first thing we learned tonight is don't put anything in any of your holes without an exit strategy. Have an exit strategy. <laughs> Goes in, it's got to come out. There has to be planning when it comes to your holes. And I'm not just talking the holes down here. Don't swallow anything. But you're not oh. really confident. You can either break down yes or expel whole yes stop but just we are just very careless with things we put in our holes um we've learned new set what you don't get a new set no you come with one set of holes that's it and you are not a golf course they can't just fix them well if they make if someone makes a new hole you're in trouble yeah that's not a good thing yeah. you should only have so many yeah um We've learned it is very important to size your metal cock ring properly. Yeah, and use a softer metal. Otherwise, you're in the goddamn ER with a motherfucker with an angle. And it's a place I'm pretty confident no man wants to be. Yeah. Like, even if you're into the CBT type of fetish, I'm pretty sure you don't want to be there. Yeah. That's extreme. We've, I'm not telling you what CBT is. Look it up. We've learned you can't half-ass on on uh, impersonating a cop because they'll spot you. Yeah. Especially not dodge dart. A dodge dart. Come on, really? A dodge fucking dart? That's that's. I mean, I guess the Winchesters impersonate FBI agents in a fucking Impala. Yes, but they are. But they're on the CW. Yeah, and also. Yeah, they're they're awful now. It's not good anymore. It's been bad. It's sad. Um, we've learned 
that just because it's not legal doesn't mean do it anyway to get somewhere in the world. It means do shit the right way because you might be trying to do something really fucking stupid. Also, you might die. You might die. It's not. Sometimes it really isn't better to ask forgiveness than per permission. Yeah, because it's hard to do that when you're dead. When, yeah, you, you, it's and hard. chopped into a million pieces by a jet engine. Yeah. We've learned there's probably somebody at a police academy who is trained to teach people how to grapple naked people. I just googled CBT and got cognitive behavioral therapy, which I don't think is what Tara is talking about. No. <laughs> it's not. It's not. And that is that is a shared acronym that does amuse my psychologist. Husband. <laughs> And finally, we have learned that there is a there is a market for insurance against crazy naked people. They need to get Flo from from Progressive on that. <laughs> no, I think she, she. I don't think she'd be really cool with that. She's or cool the with a lot of stuff. They need a little commercial with the little gecko just like walking down the street, and a naked guy runs by, and he's like, "Bully me!" I'm pretty sure the gecko would be like. You fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> I'm going back to my swamp. I'm going back to the Fuck you. Fuck you. I don't think he's Scottish or Cockney. I, well, I can't really do any good accents. I suck at them oh. all. All right, fair enough. Yeah, people are pointing out the Aflac duck would just bite you in the dick. He would. It's Gilbert Gottfried. He's been known to do that sort of thing. Yeah. He just goes around biting dicks all over the place. They can't stop him. It's really hurt his... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why you don't see Gilbert Gottfried anymore. He'll no, because the they just can't stop him from biting people's dicks. Yeah, exactly. It's tragedy, really. <laughs> Damn, we're going to get sued. We're going to get sued for libel by fucking Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried's going to goddamn sue us. That'll be the that'll be how the show ends. What are you doing on the fucking internet? Oh, God. <laughs> it wasn't the king of Thailand. It's Gilbert Gottfried. It God wasn't the Australians. It's Gilbert fucking Gottfried. It's Gilbert Gottfried got us in the end. <laughs>